are what is up world today I am going to be doing something that is for my computer design class slash coding class and as you can tell from this accent this is going to be on my YouTube channel and for those who are going to watch this video for my class I'm going to be uploading this for my YouTube channel and another thing is I don't usually use this little webcam -y thing much so that's why the frame rate is really, really bad, and essentially is really, yeah, just slow and crappy, and it looks like reverse. Like, I'm holding up my left hand, it's holding up its right. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's just for me. <sighs> so confusing. Anyway, I'm going to be teaching you how to design your own video game. And these are the techniques that I plan on using in my further future when I plan on designing video games. Step 1. Try to think of an original idea. Yes, nowadays it is extremely hard for you to come up with your own idea, but there are tiny little hidden secrets that you can use to your advantage in order for you to find your own original idea. One idea is that you could take two ideas into one, that's one technique that I usually use a lot. Um, so for in game design, you have to think of the game that you're making. The idea has to be original. Because obviously, no one's going to buy the game if it's a rip-off of something else. Now you could sell a game. Like nowadays, there's so many first-person shooter games that it's unreal. They've essentially just taken a first-person shooter game, added a bunch of stuff, subtracted a bunch of stuff, and multiplied and divided a bunch of stuff, and what do you know, original idea. You could use that to your advantage as well as most people have have in the past. Have, have, what? Anyway, um, so essentially that's what you can do. It can be inspired by an action or an observation. Say you do something and it just inspires you to make your own idea out of it. It could be an action, like I just mentioned, or an observation. You could see someone do something, or you could do something and it gives you an idea. That's just one way I plan on uh, getting my ideas through my head. And ideas can be transferred throughout the game, so it can change if you need it to. Step 2. Prove that the idea is yours. Now, I'm not going to lie, I thought of an idea, and it was stolen because... Well, for one thing, I didn't make sure it was my idea, so they essentially took my idea and they claimed it their ideas because it was, um, they, they already copyrighted it and I didn't, so, I mean, I just happened to think of it first, but they also did, but they had the advantage of copywriting. So, whenever you have an idea, always try and copyright it, and the example that I'm giving is I had an idea for something way before Rick and Morty came out. And that was, uh, that was essentially my idea. I didn't copyright it, and they ended up stealing it. But, anyways, yes, make sure no one has that idea, like the mistake I made, and make sure it's unique to your own game. Like I said before, the ideas have been twisted, turned, flipped, and upside down, but hey, stuff happens. Uh, make sure your ideas get on the internet. That's another thing. It doesn't have to be copyrighted. Just if it's out there, someone can say, Wait a minute, he took that idea from that guy from the internet. See, it's already out there before someone already probably copyrighted it. You, they could say that it was their ideas before they copyrighted it. So, there's another thing for you to get boosted on one of your ideas. Step 3. Try to establish the basis of a story. Now that you've got your general idea, on what your game is supposed to be, give it more in depth, go more in depth in the story. Essentially, give more of a broad idea of what the whole thing is about. Usually you'll just start out with, this game is a first person shooter game where you kill the aliens. Wow, I haven't heard that one before. So you gotta get more in depth to it. Make sure the story is yours, it isn't already been copyrighted, stolen, or used. You have more than one idea to branch off your general idea, which essentially means once you have an idea, you can go separate ways from that idea. So say, first person shooter alien game with guns and swords, or also with monsters with, instead of aliens. That, that could be something you could do. 
Um, so yeah, you can always branch off from your original idea. Step four, characters. Every game has a character. Even if you make your own character, that still is a character. And you gotta have a storyline behind a character, and if you don't, then honestly you don't see the point of the game in the beginning, and there's no reason to continue on. So if you have a storyline for the character, it'll give more of the player a reason to continue on. Like, oh wow, this character is in has an interesting backstory, so I might just keep on playing this. That's that's usually what gamers think in the back of their head. They don't usually think that, like, wow, this guy is pretty cool. Uh, I guess I'm going to keep on playing it. It's not something you usually say out loud. It's just something you say in the back of your head and you hardly even notice it. Um, so essentially, add a protagonist and an antagonist. That's essentially the basis on what you can do for characters. I mean, that's the easiest thing you can start with. Give the characters a backstory. Make connections. All right. So you can have multiple characters. Make sure that some of them are related, or maybe some of them are friends, or heck, maybe the villain ends up being the main character's best friend back in kindergarten, and now they're mortal enemies because he stole his goldfish. <sighs> Those days. Those days. Give all characters a meaning for what they are doing in the storyline, so they've got to tie in with the surrounding game. For example, one of the most famous games that everyone should know about, Mario. Mario's storyline related to it is the Mushroom Kingdom. He's in the Mushroom Kingdom, he has a bunch of items, kills Bowser. Antagonist, protagonist. You got Bowser and Mario. That's, that's as easy as it gets right there. When you think of it that way, Mario isn't that creative at all. And this exact, uses exactly all the things that most famous games out there use. Step 5. Add more unique objects. By objects, I also mean like items or other various things you can use in the game. So, get more involved with the storyline, which means the items need to be related to the storyline. By that, I just mean like, oh, first person shooter game. It's going to have guns. Obviously, it's a shooter game. That's what I mean by tying in with the storyline. It doesn't have to be super in-depth. You're in the land of Xenoblade. And your weapon is called the Xenoblade. No, it's called the Monado Sword, you idiot. Anyway, the meaning of the items is to give the player a sense of power. So essentially, every item has a purpose. Item, just a weapon, or... Yeah, an item. Just essentially an item. A weapon is just an example of an item. You can use these items as something, like, for the player to work for. Maybe near the end he needs some special weapon to kill the enemy. <coughs> Zelda! Anyway, uh, you can give these items a rank, so to speak, as whereas most weapons are more powerful than the other, so the player must strive to get the best weapon, and eventually kill the boss. Zelda! Anyway. Step 7. Add variety. This, I cannot stress enough, is super, Im just super relevant to when it comes to making video games. Variety to a game makes everything so much more interesting. I cannot stress this enough. Add a bunch of stuff. Yes, it will be a pain. Sure, it'll take a, a lot of work, but it will literally pay off. Because you get money, and it pays off. Do you get it? Okay, I'll stop. Now that you've essentially had all the items, you can add a variety to the items. So, all of them are really, really powerful. Or, and then there's a whole different variety of them that are all really just dumb. <laughs> Skyrim. Anyway, just make sure the player has something to work towards. Variety is something that gives the player... Now again, this is something that a gamer will just think in the back of their head. This gives the player something like, Oh wow, this is so much more interesting. I need to know what all of these things are. For example, Pokemon. There's like 721, not counting the new Sun and Moon. 
We'll just say that. That generation, there's going to be more than 721, probably. Most likely. We already know five. If you're watching this later, then that's how old this is. So essentially, like Pokemon, there's got to be a lot of variety to something for the player to work for. Gotta catch them all. Yeah, that that's something the player works for. So variety. If there's a lot of something, the gamer will try and perfect it. It's essentially like 100%ing a game. You got to find and do everything. And then you're fully done with the game. So if there's variety, it'll make the gamer play it more. Which will make the gamer want to play it more. So, variety. Super relevant topic towards video games. Cannot stress that enough. Super important. Super important. Step eight and the final step. Just an overall, make sure to add a great story, which essentially is something for the player to... It's essentially like a grabber for the player. Get them interested in the story. Purpose. What is the game? What is your goal? What is the overall achievement? Variety. Again, need variety. That's something a gamer needs. Those three things is what will make a great game. So overall, if you follow all those steps, guarantee this, you will make a good game. Just make sure you invest in it and make sure a lot of people know about it, so like commercials and stuff, so you can advertise it and then everyone will know about it. And if they're interested in it, then you will make a lot of money from it. So to start off, that would mean a great story. So then once the player starts playing the game, then they'll realize the great purpose and great variety of the game. So that is how you make a good game. Thank you.